Well, hello, Gates Club. Uh, it's Kate coming to you this morning with officially a stiff back. I don't know what I did <clears throat> yesterday or the day before. <clears throat> Maybe it was running around being a skeleton the other day, but I'm really stiff right here. You know when you're having to pick things up like this because it's so stiff and you're walking your hands back up. So I've taken proof in, I've had something to eat, I've taken proof in, and so I just thought I would show you in real time what a cake does when her back is really stiff. And I mean, after uh, uh, what, 35 years of exercising, um, one of the things that I have had in the, back, in the past is a prolapsed disc. Um, I also have uh, lower back problems since carrying the twins for 39 weeks at uh, the age of 43 and so that just really uh, didn't help things at all but I know plenty of you if you've got a bad work position um, if you sleep funnily it's a natural thing we were never meant to be upright like this and so occasionally you are going to get a stiff back so this is what I do to get rid of it okay here we go getting down on the floor in a nice back friendly way I'm positioned in front of the mirror so that you can see what I'm doing in the mirror as much as in, in the forefront. Let me change that. There we go, now I'm down on the floor. Okay, so my first firm favorite <clears throat> is to rotate my knees around, <clears throat> just using my body weight of my knees and my legs to rotate around the base of the spine. You can see I'm moving the one way, then the other. This is just giving a gentle massage to the SI joints. And just getting that joint moving naturally. I've got the heater on me. Um, if I'd have had time and the forethought this morning, I would have put a heated pad I don't know if you've got one of those wheat filled pads that you can put in the microwave. I would heat it up before I did this. I took proof in an hour ago so that that's the anti-inflammatory is kicking in as well. Now we'll take one leg down, arms out and take it across. Gentle, gentle stretch. You can see I'm moving my knee gently up and down. But my issue is here, but this is really good for just stretching. Now breathe. And when I'm breathing, I'm trying to expand this space between my ribs and my hip bone. Not my chest. I'm taking the breath deep down into here. Now into the middle. Other leg down. And over to the other side. Ooh, I can feel it there. So obviously that side more than the other. And just relaxing in, deep breaths. Barely breaths in there. And then rotating into center. And I'm gonna hug one leg into me but I'm relaxing the leg. Relaxing the leg, relaxing my hip, keeping the head on the floor, and just hugging it in to get that uh, pelvis to just move slightly. And then relax. I'm trying to do nothing that's gonna put any strain on, so I'm not lengthening both legs at the same time. I'm doing everything with a bent knee just protecting that lower back. Pull in here, leg relaxed, hips relaxed. Just gently holding it in, breathe in and out. Now I'm going to take a block like this. Uh, you can see here as well, this is another block that I used before I got this yoga block. But you can also use a book, but it's something that kind of dimensions. And you're going to place this under the pelvis. 
and I'm going to take my weight up again. So you can see there is now a space here. You can see exactly where this is positioned. So my tailbone is just off the block, but my main pelvis is supported by the block. And now I'm going to take my arms up. And I'm just going to lay here. This is a really good detoxing position. And I'm breathing. Just letting gravity very gently. This is very um, deep stretches, but very gentle on your body. Now bring the arms in. I'm taking the feet down to the floor and I'm taking one arm, one leg out and stretching it across the base of that block. If you have lower back issues and you've been to, and you've seen a chiropractor within the last six weeks, I would do this, but do it on the floor without the block. Only use the block if you know it is okay with your back. Go very tentatively with this because it does extend the stretch. And in, and over to the other side. Oh, stretching it up there. Now I'm trying to breathe in to here, into my hip, into this area here. So as I breathe in, big diaphragmatic breath and out. Now, because that is feeling good, I mean, you should feel nothing but relaxed, no, no pain, no hint of pain, nothing but relaxed, stretching sensation. Then I know I'm safe to go with both legs. I don't always do this. If I feel still feel any tension in there, I'll just stick with the one, or I'll take my legs back up in the air again. So adapt this, girls, for whatever situation you're in. But right now, I need something <laughs> to move within my lower back, so I am doing this. And then I'm coming up, bringing the arms down, and taking away that block. I can instantly feel a beautiful space in there. Stretching out on the floor again. And then I'm going to bring my knees up to uh, here and I'm going to rotate them from one side to the other. Sometimes I start with this, but my back was too stiff to start with this. Now I can feel it easing off already. And I'm going to show you another version of this, which some of you will be able to do, and some of you will have to come back and do this one again. So I'm keeping it over to the side here. I'm taking my heel and I'm putting it on the outside of my knee. When I first did this exercise, I only discovered these, uh, these uh, yoga stretches um, during lockdown, actually. And when I first did this, I felt like I had got a red hot golf ball in my hip. Because that's where I've uh, had some injuries in the past in my hip. But now it just feels nice. If you can't do this and it hurts, just put your foot on the floor underneath the knee. And relax. Windmill again with the knees and over to the other side. Take the knee on and stretch it out. This works with all of the tendons and the ligaments, all the lady bits. It really, this is such a good one. Such a good one. But again, you do, can do it like this or you can put the foot on the floor. You might have one side. We're all stronger on one side than the other and we all generally have more injuries on one side than the other. Through different things that we've done when you've slipped, driving the car, all of the car accidents, anything like that can really affect the body. And relax. Gentle rotate again. And then round to one side. And I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna come up into this position. You can see that my legs are in that position. And I'm gonna waff round. This is a gentle stretch on the lower back. Now watch, I'm 
I'm taking my weight down over that knee. You can hold it up here, or if you have the flexibility, take it down here. Wonderful stretch into the hips and the lower back. And come up again, and waft it round. Waft it round. Breathe in and out. And over we go to the other side. Positioning myself like this. First sweep across the floor and up. Across the floor and up. Really mobilizing into the hips and the lower back and now I'm going to take that gentle stretch over my knee, over the knee. I'm slightly stiffer this side because I know whatever's going on is in this side so I'm going to keep it a little bit higher on this side. I can feel the stretch into my bum cheek and I can feel the stretch in the thigh here all good for the exercises we've been doing this week. And up I come again, another few stretches round. I'm supporting myself. That, that's because I'm feeling it today. You don't have to support yourself. And last one. Round I go. Okay, I'm crossing my legs. And I'm going to arch my back the other way. So I'm arching my back this way. Watch my hips, so my hips go from collapsed to upright. Watch, upright, head back, chin up, bending my elbows, stretching across the chest as well, which again we've worked this week. And breathe, more tricky, but keep breathing and relax. Hands on the floor in front of me. Chin down, round the shoulders, and push into the floor. I'm pushing with my hands. Opening up my shoulder blades and pushing. And come up, hands onto my knees. Now I'm holding my knees and pulling. You can see the tension in my back here, watch. Pulling up. So there is tension on my hands holding onto my knees. And relax. Last one. Down on the floor. I'm pushing my hands up my legs to try and almost put um, traction on the legs. So relax myself down, hands onto my thighs, push my thighs as though I'm pushing them out of the hip socket. Push, push, push. Really good. My husband Lee, he spent four months in hospital on traction. He was told he would never walk again um, after his, his back was injured so badly. And he went on to go back and continue in the army and be the fittest he's ever been. So. We can overcome these things, but you've got to respect your body. And relax. Just bring the knees in, stretch in a curve. Bring the chin up, tail up. And one leg at a time, so we've got no stress on. Stretch it up, breathe in. And out. One more. Big breath. And out through the mouth. Bend. Round we come. And just finally up. Happy cat, sad cat. Oh, I can feel my back feels so much better. I don't think I'm up for chasing the twins yet. But it's mobile again. I now might ice it and heat it and ice it. Always finish on ice. Oh, 
Wonderful. Now, I would gently come up in a nice back friendly way, as always. And oh, yes, that feels so much better. I do hope you've enjoyed this and better keep this one in your, um, uh, in your, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> in your backpack, in your memory, so that if you ever get a sore back in the future, keep this saved on your uh, Facebook so that you can use it for future. Okay, girls, see you tomorrow.